It's the 21st of November, and as you can see, it's a clear, crisp morning. We've had freezing temperatures overnight, and the day temperatures vary between 3 and 4 degrees centigrade. So it is cold. In this part of England where we live, in southern England, we don't have very harsh winters, but on two or three nights of the year, the temperatures can go down to minus 10 degrees centigrade. So we like to protect some of our trees. Many of the trees are quite hardy, like the Scots pines, for instance, are hardy. Some of the larger maples are also hardy. But to be safe, we feel that some of the trees should be protected. If you look around here, the trees that have all lost their leaves are large trees. So we won't rush to put them away until probably middle or the end of December, because the worst of the winter is in January. So if you look around, we've left a few trees on the benches, but we have gradually started taking the trees away from the benches to put into their winter quarters. As a rule, the larger the tree and the larger the pot, the better they are able to withstand the cold because the large pot doesn't freeze uh, as solid as some of the very small ones. So the large pots we are not too worried about. It's really the smaller trees that we are more concerned. So some of these large trees will stay out here till probably the end of December when we start putting them away. These are imported Japanese white pine that came from Japan maybe about 20 or 30 years ago. And because they've acclimatized to the British winters, they are fairly hardy, so uh, we are not too worried about them. Trees which have been newly imported from Japan, you'd need to be more careful because they are not acclimatized to the climate that you live in. We will show you what we do with some of these trees that need protection. If we walk around the nursery, you will see that we have some greenhouses and we also have shade tunnels and plastic tunnels. So let us have a look at some of the shade tunnels. The shade structure that you see behind us, we keep exclusively for our Satsuki azaleas. Satsuki azaleas in the British winters are quite hardy. They will lose some of their leaves because they're not permanently evergreen. They're semi-evergreen. But just the overhead shade will pro provide enough protection for Satsuki azaleas in the British winters. You will also see that these benches are at least about, I would say, 60 to centimeter high, this one. And these are about 30, uh, 30 inches or 90 centimeter high. And the purpose of having these benches is twofold. They provide a very useful display, but in the winter we put our trees underneath the benches and that provides very useful protection. Sometimes we cover with a sheet of plastic, which I will show you in a moment, but even if you didn't cover with the sheet of plastic, the uh, trees kept under the benches provides quite a lot of winter protection. So this shade netting is quite adequate to pro protect our satsuki azaleas. If you're not sure about it, then you can put it in an unheated greenhouse, but make sure that the greenhouse doesn't get too warm, otherwise you'll confuse the tree and they will break their dormancy and think it's spring. On our nursery, we have two large uh, polycarbonate greenhouse complexes. They're all about, I think, uh, 30 meter by 30 meter, some of them are a bit longer. But in those greenhouses, we keep a lot of the trees that they are being developed. But we have one large shade tunnel where we keep our evergreen plants. And we also have a couple of polytunnels, which we use for overwintering other types of plants like the trident maple. Let's have a look at some of the shade tunnels and see what we keep in it. Once the first frost gets on the trees, this is what we call the frost blush. So all these brown junipers have been exposed to frost. We've had a few frosts, maybe about 10 or 15 days of hard frost. 
um, I think towards the end of October and very early November and it has affected the top. We call this the frost blush because like the sunburn it burns the uh, foliage and makes it look brown but if you see inside where the frost hasn't had a chance to affect them it is green it's green underneath so don't worry about this if you go to Japan you'll see most of these famous nurseries in Japan that have major junipers if you go in the winter you'll be uh, surprised if you've never seen them before to see the junipers this color as well this brown color it doesn't mean that the tree is dying it's just that this is the effect of the frost on the tree again if you look at this tree if you look at the inside it is green but the outside is where the frost has slightly burnt it but come the spring they will turn green again so this shade is enough to give it protection so all our juniper rigidas, the top row, and the Itoigawa junipers are just kept under shade. The temperature does go down to minus five, but the shade is adequate to protect it. We also have the space underneath the benches. So if we get a really, really hard frost, all we do is we put the trees underneath there, and that will give it additional protection. So, don't worry too much about keeping it in greenhouses, but just a shade tunnel is adequate. I know that a lot of amateurs cannot have large structures like this, but if you make a little wooden structure and cover with netting or cover with polystyrene or uh, plastic sheeting, that will be adequate. These are our white poly tunnels, and we protect most of our trident maples in this structure. The trident maple is not as hardy as the ordinary Japanese maple. Japanese maple is Asa palmatum. The trident maple is the Asa buya gerianum. So they are slightly tender, so we tend to protect our trident maples. We always ventilate the tunnels because if you keep it completely enclosed throughout the winter, you can get a lot of fungal disease developing so fresh air doesn't help so if you have a nice fine day open your tunnels and let the fresh air come in but if it gets very cold then close the ends of the tunnels but don't keep them closed permanently because that breeds disease so you can see all our deciduous trees those which are more valuable like the korean hornbeams and the like pyracantha also needs some protection Different plants have different degrees of hardiness. So you've got to know which is hardy in that particular area. So if you live in a more exposed and colder region, then you may need to take note of how hardy the plants are that you are growing. So for instance, the pyracantha is not as hardy as the cotoneaster. And some of the imported Chinese elms which are newly imported from China, may not be very hardy. So those we protect as well. I would like to just give you a little tip about in-curve pots. In-curve pots are pots which curve inwards. And these pots are particularly vulnerable in frost. Because they're in-curve, when the soil freezes, the soil hasn't got anywhere to go. So when it thaws, it will burst the pot because that's when the expansion takes place and the soil cannot rise but it only has to go sideways and it can crack the pot so with in-curve pots be particularly careful another bit of advice most of the Japanese pots are completely frost hardy they would have been fired to about 1200 or 1260 degrees centigrade so they're completely frost hardy so when the temperature goes down to minus 10 or minus 12, they will not crack. However, in recent years, we have found that quite a few of the glaze pots that come from China are not very uh, frost hardy. So in hard frost, they can flake. The glaze in particular will flake. But the Chinese unglazed pots are very good quality. They seldom bust in the frost and they don't even flake. The Japanese ceramic pots, especially ones from Tokonami uh, region, they're particularly good 
they will never flake or crack. So you've got to be careful. And of course the mica pots and plastic pots are completely uh, frost uh, proof. This is another of our tunnel structures. It's a twin span tunnel. And we keep some of our smaller size Japanese maple, Asa palmatums, Deshojos and other varieties here for the winter. And this is where they'll stay till they're ready for repotting in February. Uh, and once the frost and the winter is over, we will bring them out into the open round about March. Uh, we also protect some of the more delicate trees. The Japanese holly, although some people grow them indoors in cool rooms, they are generally used as outdoor trees. Those are like semi bonsai, more like garden trees. We protect them from the frost because they are not entirely hardy in the European temperate climate. Same with the olives. We have those large olives, which are really garden trees. So we protect those from the frost as well, because they come from Mediterranean region where the winters are not hard. But once they come to Northern Europe, they tend to be a bit tender. So they need protection. So knowing what trees to protect and those that can stand hard frost is part of the uh, trick in overwintering trees. So you need to ask your friends or ask your friendly bonsai grower of bonsai club as to what species can stand hard winters and w which trees need protection. But whatever you do, you must never keep your outdoor trees in heated greenhouses because that confuses the tree and uh, it can burst into growth when you don't want them to burst into growth. Now this is the Savara cypress and the botanical name is Camicyprus uh, picifera. It used to be very popular for bonsai but somehow in the UK we don't use it very much. But as you can see this is the winter color. It is so brown that you think that it's almost dead. And this is an example of an ordinary English yew. So you can see the frost has made the tips brown but the insides are green. But come the spring, by April or May of next year, it will turn bright, bright green. So don't despair. These trees are not dead. This is just the winter color. And I don't rush to put this one in because the cryptomerias tend to be very hardy trees. These are imported trees, imported when they were small and we've grown them on the nursery for the last 20 or 25 years to make these forest groups. This is our greenhouse where we keep our indoor trees and as you can see we've got orange trees, podocarpus, bougainvilleas, lauropetalum. This greenhouse is not heated in the winter. Although it is a glass house, the temperature does go to freezing but it doesn't go below freezing. It just hovers around the uh, zero centigrade mark. But many of these trees are not uh, very happy at zero degrees uh, centigrade. So what we do, we cover them with fleece. For those of you who have not heard of fleece, it is now commonly available throughout Europe and I think most of the Western world. It is a special material called horticultural fleece. So what we do is we just cover the whole thing. We drape these bits of fleece over it for the night and that will provide adequate protection for the trees. Uh, just like that we can go right through and cover all those trees with that fleece. I know that some people who don't have uh, access to fleece they've used net curtains. A net curtain is also very good or simply a piece of plastic covering the trees will give it that additional protection. We find our bonsai benches very useful because we can put plants underneath it but we still protect it with a sheet of plastic like this. See that is enough to protect the plants so if you want to put some of these plants we can put trays of them. Just tuck them underneath for the duration of the frost. Also to protect the strong winds from blowing through that bench, you can put a sheet like this 
and then secure it with blocks or nail them to the bench. So this sort of structure is ideal for winter protection. But if you have very strong sunshine or during uh, spells of uh, milder weather, it is worth opening it out just to let the air go through so that you don't get mold and all sorts of other fungal diseases developing. So it's always better to be safe than sorry because if you are not careful with the winter protection, some of the more tender trees can uh, suffer. Another trick you can do, uh, you can also wrap the pots with bubble plastic to prevent the root ball from freezing too hard. With a pot like this, we will just put it in some bubble plastic. And that's all we do. I think because this is quite large bubbles, we can probably just put one layer like this. In fact, this is how we ship our trees to customers, but it is a very useful additional protection mechanism for trees in winter. So take care of your trees in winter and they should come out well again in the spring. Thank you very much.